Now the sons of Noah were three, Shem, Japhet, and Ham, born 100 years before the Deluge. These first of all descended from the mountains into the plains and fixed their habitation there, and persuaded others who were greatly afraid of the lower grounds on account of the flood, and so were very loath to come down from the higher places to venture to follow their examples. Now the plain in which they first dwelt was called Shinar. God also commanded them to send colonies abroad for the thorough peopling of the earth, that they might not raise seditions among themselves, but might cultivate a great part of the earth and enjoy its fruits after a plentiful manner. But they were so ill instructed that they did not obey God, for which reason they fell into calamities and were made sensible by experience of what sin they had been guilty. But when they flourished with a numerous youth, God admonished them again to send out colonies. But they, imagining the prosperity they enjoyed was not derived from the favor of God, but supposing that their own power was the proper cause of the plentiful condition they were in, and did not obey him. Nay, they added this to their disobedience to the divine will, the suspicion that they were therefore ordered to send out separate colonies, that being divided asunder, they might the more easily be oppressed. Now it was Nimrod who excited them to such an affront and contempt of God. He was the grandson of Ham, the son of Noah, a bold man, and of great strength of hand. He persuaded them not to ascribe it to God, as if it was through his means that they were happy, but to believe that it was their own courage which procured that happiness. He also gradually changed the government into tyranny, seeing no other way of turning men from the fear of God, but to bring them into a constant dependence on his own power. But he also said he would be revenged on God, if he should have a mind to drown the world again, for that he would build a tower too high for the waters to be able to reach, and that he would avenge himself on God for destroying their forefathers. Now the multitude were very ready to follow the determination of Nimrod, and to esteem it a piece of cowardice to submit to God. And so they built their tower, neither sparing any pains, nor being in any degree negligent about their work. And by reason of the multitude of hands employed in it, it grew very high, sooner than any one could expect. But the thickness of it was so great, and it was so strongly built, that thereby its great height seemed, upon first view, to be less than it actually was. It was built of burnt brick, cemented together with mortar, made of bitumen, that it might not be liable to admit water. When God saw that they acted so madly, he did not resolve to destroy them utterly. They were not grown wiser by the destruction of the former sinners, but he caused a tumult amongst them, by producing in them diverse languages, and causing that, through the multitude of those languages, they should not be able to understand one another. The place wherein they built the tower is now called Babylon, because of the confusion of that language which they readily understood before. For the Hebrews mean by the word Babel, confusion. The Sibyl also makes mention of this tower, and of the confusion of the language, when she says thus, When all men were of one language, some of them built a high tower, as if they would thereby ascend up to heaven. But the gods sent storms of wind, and overthrew the tower, and gave every one his peculiar language. And for this reason, it was that this city was called Babylon. But as to the plain of Shinar, in the country of Babylonia, Hestaeus mentions it when he says thus, Such of the priests as were saved took the sacred vessels of Jupiter and Yalius, and came to Shinar of Babylonia. <laughs>